cataractcoach.com and sure a free capsulotomy with Femto. So a 5-second laser does not always give you a complete cut. Keep that in mind. As you can see in this picture, the capsule is still attached there. So our guest surgeon here is Dr. Tiziano Giobellina from Argentina. We had him on the podcast yesterday, and here's a case of his where you can see it's a routine cataract. There's a femtosecond laser cut that's been made in the anterior lens capsule, but it's still attached. So he has come up with a neat invention here. He's designed his own instrument, which he'll use, and you'll see in a moment here, to ensure a complete capsulotomy, so breaking those few adhesion points. You can see here on the video, right about the 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and maybe 2 o'clock position, there's some adhesions there. So here's his instrument. Now you can also use this to go inside your incisions. There's the tip of it. You can see it looks like a little spear there. So you can go inside. There it is. Here's the other end. And you can go and open the incision up with this end. This is a, a smaller end that has like a round disc on it. And that'll easily go inside to open the incision. And then you can also use, here we go, the sharper point, the spear point to go inside here, open up that incision in the cornea. Because remember, the femtosecond laser doesn't fully open the incision. It makes a little perfect pattern there. So now you've opened that up nicely and now going inside the eye here and just push on the central lens capsule and you push there centrally and you can see you'll break those last few adhesions. There's one, there's another, and then there's the final one. There it is almost, nope, try again. And beautiful, all done. Now you have a completely free floating capsulotomy. At this point, the rest of the case can be pretty routine. So interesting uh, use of this instrument there. Here we'll do some hydrodissection. You see the nucleus has also been divided into quadrants by the femtosecond laser. So now I can go in here with a balanced salt solution on a 27 gauge cannula, maybe that's a 25 gauge, and a little gentle hydrodissection that the anterior capsulotomy just came out of the eye. There's that lens nucleus, looks like about a five millimeter capsulotomy. And once you've got the hydrodissection done, we can just go with the phaco probe and aspirate out these pieces here. Now we had a great time talking on the Cataract Coach podcast yesterday about his clinic situation there in Argentina, and also the meeting he started. He started this meeting called Ophthalmo Cordoba, based out of the city of Cordoba, Argentina. We Americans say Cordoba, but we'd be saying it wrong. And so I went to that meeting for the first time this year and had a fantastic time. What's interesting about the meeting is it's totally free. There's no registration fee. So you can see here, now going with the FACO probe with a relatively soft nucleus, you can just aspirate. So you can see those quadrants. You can go right to the apex of one of those quadrants and kind of lift it up and just aspirate that piece out. It should be pretty easy to do here. So again, surgeon is, is sitting superiorly in this case, now going into the second instrument. Here's the other end of his instrument, which is like a, a little disc shaped at the tip, so nice and soft and basically not sharp. And you can use that to lift up these pieces. There you go. Lift up the corner of one quadrant and then just aspirate it out pretty easily. And again, obviously this is a very soft lens here, but that instrument allows him just to lift these pieces up for easy aspiration. And again, to make it efficient, but also to make it safe to stay away from the capsule. And once this is done here, these pieces can come out pretty easily. You'll be left with like an epinuclear shell, which you can use vacuum and kind of flip it up and bring it out of the capsule bag and aspirate it. So there's the last bit of the, the central quadrant, the endonuclear is out. Now here comes the epinuclear shell. Now the key here is to vacuum only. Don't give a lot of energy here, no energy in fact. So vacuum, vacuum, vacuum to free this thing up. And then you want to get it away from the posterior capsule. So again, if you give energy here, you can go right through the piece the epidural shell, you would hit the capsule. You don't want to do that. Remember, this is a patient with a relatively soft lens, didn't have too much cataract. This patient may be doing this for refractive reasons, right? We've soon realized that our most refractive surgical procedure is cataract surgery. So there we go. There's the last of the epinuclear shell. Comes out pretty easily. Easily vacuumed. There we go. Now we'll switch over to the IA probe for cortex removal. Now, in the meantime, let me tell you about Retina Rounds, our sister channel. It's an amazing sister channel. It has great information for ophthalmologists like you and me who specialize in cataract surgery. There's great material there that you can learn from as well. Yes, there's advanced retina material, but there's also simple things like how to do a depressed retina exam to check the retinal periphery. And in that video, guess what? I'm the patient. Go check it out. I think you'll, you'll laugh a little bit you'll, and you'll learn a lot. Now, going here with the IA probe, here's a coaxial IA probe with that polymer tip. I'm going to clean up the capsule bag here. Now, one of the challenges here with the femtosecond laser is, remember, it also ends up cutting the anterior capsule, the anterior cortical tissue. So it's a little bit tougher to grab. you got to go a little bit deeper inside the capsule bag to get it towards the equator. But here you go, nice, clean capsule bag. That looks beautiful. Clean all this up, and we'll get the lens in. Any guesses now? What do you think the lens is going to be here? 
So given such a, a very light cataract, very minimal cataract, my guess is patients doing this for primarily refractive reasons. So perhaps a range a lens that will give a wider range of vision, maybe an EDOF lens, extended up the focus, maybe a multifocal or trifocal lens. Let's find that. Or maybe the patient's hyperopic and even a monofocal lens will make them happy. I mean, sometimes we forget the punishment that is being a high hyperope. These poor patients who are like plus three hyperopes really suffer a lot. So let's take a look here, cleaning up the bag pretty well. Now keep in mind the edge of the capsulorexis or capsulotomy there is not as strong as a proper capsulorexis. So yes, the laser made a pretty opening there, but it's not as strong as a regular rexis. So now going in with our viscoelastic, filling up the capsular bag, there you go, get a good fill. And I think we're ready for that lens. Now you'll notice the incisions here that you make with a femtosecond laser, the corneal incisions, they're okay. I actually still prefer diamonds. I think the diamonds give a far better incision than any femtosecond laser, period. Now, here comes the IOL being delivered, and now it's going to go in the capsule bag. Let's go. Looks like a single piece of acrylic design. Let's look at the exact type of lens. Get that open up in the capsule bag, and let's see. What do you think is going to be on that optic? Is that going to be a monofocal lens, or is it going to be it's an EDOF lens? Let's take a look. It doesn't look like trifocal. Can you see? Is there a central focusing element there? Or maybe it's just a monofocal. Maybe this was that hyperopic patient. You know, those poor patients were hyperopic, let's say plus three diopters, they went their whole youth with perfect vision, right? Because they had so much accommodation that they could just easily accommodate the plus three for distance and then plus four, five, six for up close tests. Oh, there it is. There are rings. Nope, look at that. There's, it looks like a trifocal lens. Now I see the rings on it. So yes, certainly patient had this done for refractive reasons because it was a very minimal cataract. And now we can see those are the refractive or defractive rings on the lens optic. So this is probably, my guess is it's a trifocal lens there. And then get that centered up. Now, the trifocal, remember, you've got to get those uh, lenses beautifully centered in the pupil. You want those Purkinje images there. You see those Purkinje images. You want them lined up with the center of that optic. There you go. Now we can easily see the rings. So very nicely done. I'm sure this patient's going to be quite happy. And then uh, we'll go from there. So interesting case here. Thank you for sharing. I do appreciate it. And I'll certainly be back to Cordoba in the future to visit for your meeting again. It was truly a great time. I love meeting the Argentinian off the mall, especially the young ones. Wow, what great energy they have. It was truly an amazing meeting. So also check out our Cattle Coach podcast. I think you're going to really love it. We talked to a well-known ophthalmologist for an hour, and we figured out, well, what's the secret? What's your secret sauce? How do you succeed? How did you do this in your career? So I asked Tiziano, how did you start this meeting from nothing and make it such a huge meeting? There were 800 people there this last meeting. So how'd you do it? He tells you all the secrets. So you can start your own meeting. Again, check it out. You'll love it. And remember, cataracoach.com, you can go there and submit your video. Click on the link. Check it out.